Happy Wednesday, all my stock market investors. It is Shadai, and I'm back again with another Cash App investing video. And today we're talking about media and entertainment stocks. But before I get there, I just want to say that Cash App, y'all update. The update, I'm loving the update. I feel like Cash App is really starting to really uh, upgrade this investing platform that we're using and how they got the categories now. It just makes it so much easier to jump around and look for stocks in certain, in certain categories and then also compare stocks within the same category. So I appreciate Cash App. There's only one thing that I think that they just need to do a little bit better on and I know it's a little tough is the stock pricing. I know it moves very fast, but I think me personally I feel like it lags a little on Cash App. It doesn't fully reflect like if you have your computer open and I know it's because everything's moving so fast, so I'm sure it must be tough, but if you have your computer open and you're trading on Cash App, the stock price is usually a little bit different, not by a lot, it's probably by cents, but I'm just being a little mother. Let's get into it. We all know the big leaders in the media entertainment are Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, blah, 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 blah. But I want to get in on this. I want to get on, on some sleepers because I'm not chasing no Apple at its highest highs or no Amazon at its highest highs. And I don't want you to either. I'm looking out for you, you two family. So let's look into some sleepers, some potential down the road stocks to buy into. The first one I talk I want to talk about is Discovery. You know, Discovery Channel. Let's 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 name a quick few channels that they they have HGTV, TLC, Animal Planet, Travel Channel, The Food Network. I'm sure I'm missing a few more, but these are all household names and I've I've said it in the past, content is king. Content is king. I said it in the past as I'm making this video, Discovery is trading at $21.49. And I really do think that if they can gather the right resources to get a better direct-to-consumer as far as bringing content or even producing more content or even getting other content creators to produce content for Discovery Channel on other platforms such as Snapchat, Hulu, Netflix, in which Netflix, Hulu, they're already streaming some of these uh, content that Discovery produces. Content's king. Content's always going to be king. And I think Discovery Channel has always been dope, especially for for the youth. I think it gives them uh, a, just a, a different perspective and what's out there in the world. And I think that they have they have a future. They have a future. And I'm a long-term investor, so... I can definitely see. Let's actually let me double check. I'm pretty sure that they're down a good amount on the year. They're down 27% on the year. Five years from now, who knows where Discovery Channel will be? They're you know they're they're shifting around a lot of their um, management. So I think they're trying to acquire that right player. And if you do your research, do your research. I think that this could be a company that can pay off in the long run. Content is king. I took my chance on Viacom CBS at their highest highs. I've spoken before how I was losing money when they, they dropped like 50% and now they're gaining and now I'm up with Viacom CBS. I was always right from the beginning. Content is king. The statistics are there. It only takes time and the right amount of moves. So let me know in the comments what y'all think about Discovery. Do you remember watching Discovery as a kid? I do. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. The next stock has 56 liens against them right now. And that is SeaWorld Entertainment. And I know y'all thinking, man, why are you telling me about a stock that got 56 liens worth $16 million? Liens is a bad thing, but it isn't the end of the world. It's just... These contractors are, are using their rights to make sure that they get paid. They have the right to throw liens because the payments have been lagged. And that's mainly due to the parks shutting down. But now they're reopening. I think back in June 11th, they're reopening. And people want to go out. I think the youth is always going to be attracted to the to the animals in the sea. And that, I've never been to SeaWorld, but I think that you can 
like swim with dolphins and touch these animals that you wouldn't normally get to be around, get to see. And the good thing about SeaWorld is even if they're not uh, selling out at capacity, they can always try to provide some type of private service or private entertainment for, you know, the well-off, the rich that are going to continue to spend money no matter what. Another good thing is all their parks are in the United States and people will be traveling more domestically uh, this year, I think next year, until things calm down a little bit. You know, people still want to go out. They still want to to go to amusement parks, even though cases are rising. You know, the nearest park I have near me is, is in New Hampshire, Canyon Bay Lake. And even my own sister said she wanted to go. So people want to go out. I mean, you've never been to Bush, Bar Bush Gardens in Tampa Bay? I've been to Bush Gardens in Tampa Bay. It's a very nice park, I would say. But SeaWorld uh, has a lot of, I think, long-term potential. Because there's like, what's, I don't know, what's the competition? What's the competition? And they're not like Disney where they have like a, these massive parks and stuff like that. And, and I think that there's, there's some media and content potential for SeaWorld as well that maybe they haven't fully, fully capitalized on. And if they do, it can maybe lead them in a different direction. You know, we're very interested in things that we can't see on a day-to-day basis. We can't live in the sea on a day-to-day -day basis. So SeaWorld brings us that connection, which is pretty cool. But the liens right now is an issue. So I wouldn't invest in them today. But have them on the watch list as, as you see, you know, the months are moving. They're going to be able to start paying back a lot of these contractors, opening up some of these new attractions for these people that are coming into the parks and looking for something amazing to do. Hey, I'm always looking for those stocks that we can we can capitalize on. Sorry for the phone. Y'all know the phone's always going off in the videos. But I'm always looking for those stocks that we can capitalize on. And make sure you just do your own research and see if SeaWorld is an opportunity for you to make money in 5 to 10 years. I'm a long-term thinker. That's what I'm always thinking. Make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video because it makes me smile and it helps out with the channel. I'm here to help y'all. If you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, let me know in the comments. Also, feel free to reach out to me via Instagram. I think a lot of people feel more comfortable doing that because it's more of a like private message. And I do appreciate everybody that reaches out. I'm here to help you. Uh, well, you're going to help me too. We're here to help each other. Because you may be investing in something that I'm not looking at. Or you may have a different outlook than me. And I may have a different outlook than you. And that's why I like to share information. Y'all have a great rest of y'all day. I'll catch up with y'all.